Come and listen to my story about a man named Jed. A poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. And then one day he was shooting at some food, and up through the ground come a bubbling crude. Oil, that is, black gold, Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire. The kinfolk said, Jed, move away from there. Said, California is the place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly. Hills, that is, swimming pools, movie stars. The Beverly Hillbillies. This looks like Redondo High. <laughs> These are the digs of Big Daddy Jed and his far-out family, in whose bosom your glorious leader spent a whole day in the Twilight Zone. But he's loaded, huh? Ooh, friends, when it comes to loot, Big Daddy is the jolly green giant. <laughs> is that you, Mr. Ed? Yeah, Ellie. Howdy. What'd she say, Shell? Howdy. That's like, uh... Aloha. Oh, Ellie Mae, this is uh, Wiggy and Shaky, and that's Horace, the great poet, thinker, and philosopher. Well, howdy. Aloha. Aloha. Hey, that's a cute little cat. Oh, well, this ain't no cat. Of course not. We're cats. That's a dog. No, it ain't. It's a kid. You're putting me on. Don't look like no kid I know. It's a baby goat. Uh, Ellie Chick, could I have a few words with Big Daddy? Oh, you mean Paul? Yeah. What she say, Shell? Paul. Oh, oh. That's like, uh, uh, Daddy-o, as in Mommy-o and Daddy-o. <laughs> well, he ain't here. He's gone out hunting. Oh, that's a bad scene. I mean, like the rent is due on our coffee house, and I wanted to put the bite on Big Daddy Greenbacks for some bread. Oh, well, come on out to the kitchen. Granny will feed you. Uh, no, no, no. Check. We need some lettuce to feed the kitty. Well, Granny's got all kinds of vittles. What'd she say, Shell? Vittles, man. That's like tacos and pizza and burgers. <laughs> well, not enough cats. We gotta fly. Dig you later, chick. If we don't find gold by noon, the landlord's gonna cool our action. Well, y'all come back now. Bye. Howdy. Howdy. Where are we going, Shell? We are going to the bank and cop a plea with old Milburn tight fingers. <laughs> Man, we gotta save the Parthenon West. You're dreaming. Drysdale will shoot us down in flames. Especially if he knows you're in on this gig. Yes, yeah, Shell, you bug that banker man. Cool it, cats. He'll never know it's me. <laughs> Assume launch position. Blast off! <laughs> I declare, Granny, the hunting in these Beverly Hills is getting sorrier every day. Me and Duke went as far back in the brush as you could go. The only thing we flushed out was a couple of real estate agents. I'll tell you something you can do. You can flush Jethro out of his room. Ain't he down yet? No, he ain't. Ever since the Countess gave him that fancy uniform, he ain't been worth his salt. Spends all of his time preening and strutting like a ruffled rooster. Well, Jethro was kind of proud of that get-up. Kind of let him pick it out himself. Well, I wish he had took it with him. The only work he does around here now is shining his boots and polishing his medals. Hey, don't be too hard on him, Granny. It's natural for a boy to like uniform. And that one of Jethro's is uncommon grand. <laughs> If he don't look like a Fourth of July parade all by himself. Thank you. <laughs> Ain't you done preening? Please, Granny, you're breathing on my metal. I'll do more and breathe on him if you don't get busy with your chores. But, Granny, you don't do chores wearing a uniform like this. Then take it off, because you're going to do something. <laughs> I want my windows washed, kindling split, 
And my Turner patch faded up. But Uncle Jed, that kind of work is for vassals and churls. <laughs> I'm a dragoon. <laughs> well, with a uniform like this, I can get me a high-paying job. Doing what? Strutting around in front of some store or something. Give the place some class. <laughs> Seems like it'd be worth a try. Be ashamed to let all this go to waste. Here you are. Take this light soap water and commence with the windows upstairs. Franny, uh, the boy thinks he'd like to go out and look for work. He don't have to go look for it. I got plenty right here. But Franny, I don't do that work no more. What? Uh, he means that uh, he'd like to do something where he could wear his uniform. Yeah. All right. He can wash windows with that mule tail, and he can split kindling with that fancy frog sticker. Well, you're gonna get it. Now, he didn't mean to grab it. Let's let the boy go yeah, out. Please, please Freddy. Watch out for my dishes. <laughs> from the Parthenon West. The what? That's the coffee house they've opened in that basement they rent from the bank. You mean those beatniks? I told you I wanted them out of that building. It never should have been rented to them in the first place. But, Chief... Never mind, I'll have it myself. <laughs> cool it, group, cool it. It's our kind and generous landlord. Hey, Mr. Moneybags, we got a favor to ask you. Yeah, will you lower our rent? Get out of my office, you creeps! Get out of my bank! Get out of my basement! And get out of my life! Well, what do you say, man? Yes or no? <laughs> He's thinking it over, cats. The answer is no! No, 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 no! Well, don't stop, man. That's a crazy beat. No, 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 no! All right, if you won't leave, I'll have you thrown out. Miss Hathaway! <laughs> Miss Hathaway! Yes, Chief? Throw them out. Hey, wait, we got another favor to ask. If you won't cut the rent, how about giving us a few extra days to raise it? I just raised it. It's double. <laughs> Did you hear that? Hey, Snow White, where are you hiding the other dwarfs? All you got here is Grumpy. <laughs> Call the police! Uh, time to split, Horace. Old man Tight Fingers is gonna whistle up the fuzz. <laughs> How could it happen? How could this dignified bank allow one of its buildings to become infested with those bearded termites? Well, as I remember, Chief, the man who rented it to them said they had excellent references. Cash. Well, just give me the idiot's name. I'll have his job. You've got it. What? It was you. <laughs> Even so, this mistake must not go unpunished. Oh, but she... No, 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 no. What's fair for one is fair for all. Starting today, everybody's lunch hour will be cut to 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> That's Jethro. What'd you do, boy? Get a job? No, I didn't. Heck fire, Uncle Jeff. I thought Beverly Hills was supposed to have class. I've been to some of the best stores in town, and you ought to see the way they treated me. Did you get no offers at all? Well, it was this fellow that stopped me on the street and offered me a job. But I ain't climbing up to no windows holding no tin cup or no organ grinder. <laughs> to go polish my medals. I think I'd stay out of the house a mite yet. Uh, your granny ain't got over your last trip through. Put the truck away. <laughs> Boy, they call this a land opportunity. That's a laugh. Look at me. Educated up to here, and where does it get me? <laughs> can't be a dragoon. You can't be a double knot spy. I can't be a brain surgeon. <laughs> Too tall to be astronaut. <laughs> Too young to be president. <laughs> what is they left? <laughs> Put the truck away. We'll think of something. Paul? 
Mr. Epps just called to see if you was back for hunting. He's coming over to borrow some bread. That poor boy still ain't got what to eat, has he? Does he not? His cat's worse off than him. But this morning, he said he needed lettuce to feed the kitty. Well, we'll see that they both get some good side meat and grits. Now, you run put on a dress. What for? Well, I reckon Mr. Epps ain't used to seeing girls wear pants. <laughs> the clampet chick. Big Daddy is back from the hunt. Here, Wiggy. You keep the phone money. Now, you cats hold off the banker man while I go shake the money tree. Hey, Shelly, uh, why don't you get this clampet cat to put some muscle on the banker man? Yeah, you say he keeps all his bread in the banker's box. Big Daddy don't muscle anybody. Big Daddy is Mr. Good. <laughs> Besides, Drysdale is his neighbor, as in love thy. <laughs> Finds out we got trouble with the banker man, he'll close the bread line. <laughs> Granny, Mr. Epps is here. You got his vittles ready? Everything he asked for. A couple of loaves of bread, some greens, and I throwed in some side meat and grits like Jed told me to. Did you put in something to feed his kitty? Yeah, but pussycats don't like lettuce, so I put in a nice big fish. <laughs> Look who's here to see us, Granny. Well, Mr. Epps. Granny Chicky, lay some skin on me. <laughs> Jed and Ellie told me what you was needing. There it is. A whole basket full. Oh, bless you. Come on over and sit down and visit us, Phil. Oh, like, thanks, Phil, but I, I gotta get that basket of bread back to the Parthenon West. What's that? That's what Miss Epps calls his coffee house. An oasis in the intellectual desert. Cool, crazy, <laughs> way out. Couldn't you find nothing in town? <laughs> it is in town. Parthenon West is the local forum of the far out. Temple of wisdom and culture for the seekers of truth. A treasury of art and beauty. A subterranean Taj Mahal. Mm, no, he's not like just the kind of a classy place Jethro would like to work. Jethro? Oh, oh, you mean that big, strong cat, uh, a Super Clyde. I recollect you called him Clyde, but his real name is Jethro. And I'd appreciate it if you'd uh, let him hang around your place. Big Daddy, your slightest wish is engraved on my fern. <laughs> you have Clyde fall by. And now, dear hearts, I must take my leave. May the saxophone of life blow you nothing but cool notes. <laughs> oh, you are fighting poverty. <laughs> Please accept the eternal gratitude of... <laughs> What is Charlie Tuna doing in my bread basket? That's to feed your kitty. They don't like lettuce. <laughs> the rest of the vittles is for you. We put in everything you told Ellie you needed. Uh, greens, lettuce, bread. <laughs> oh. I can see my State of the Union message got a bad translation. <laughs> Daddy, the kind of vittles we need is, is like a money pizza. <laughs> you, you know, a cash burger. <laughs> Those little green pictures of presidents. <laughs> Is this what you mean? Glory, Oski, it's the mother load. <laughs> Where did you young hoodlums get this money? Roll some drunk? Now, don't lose your cool, Pinch Penny. We are paying guests. Yeah, talk nice. Or we may split to a pad on Peel Street. Huh? I believe he means they might move to the Sunset Strip. Oh, good. The sooner the better. Man, is that gratitude after the way we have improved your property? Improved it? Man, look around. Why, just the presence of the great Horace gives this place class. <laughs> All these priceless murals and frescoes. <laughs> oh, he turned his deserted mine shaft into a Pacific Coast Guggenheim. <laughs> Well, in all fairness, Chief, the basement was unrentable. Yes, and now the whole building's unrentable. Oh, look, that ought to take care of it. Why don't you, like, split back to your counting house? <laughs> Scat! Does he sleep all the time? 
chick, Horace ain't sleeping. He's thinking. <laughs> Pinky? You don't talk much. But when he speaks, every word is a gem of wisdom. <laughs> Could you get him to say something now? You don't get Horace to say something. When he's ready, he just sort of comes on. Is that the way? Psst. Disturb Horace. Horace Schmorris, let's get out of this storm drain. <laughs> You haven't won yet, you skid row trainees. I'll get you out of here if I have to flood the place. Or call in an exterminator. Or a dog catcher. <laughs> Gee, what a nice man. I bet he sleeps in a little green box. And takes grouch lessons at night. I forget him, cats. Remember, we were Tap City. But now we're like paid Upsville. Let there be music and merriment. We're raided. <laughs> Drysdale was sent in the Royal Canadian Mounted Fuzz. Courage, cats. It may only be Nelson Eddy. <laughs> Now, look, cats, I'm laying it on you straight. Big Clyde is part of the package deal. You're kidding. I think he's kind of cute. Yeah, yeah, and just like Big Daddy, he has got a heart of gold. Then how come he wears that jumbo switchblade? <laughs> I don't know. It's part of his gig. He thinks he's something called a dragoon. What kind of goon? Cool it. I think he's kind of cute. All he wants to do is walk up and down out front and say howdy to the cats. Say what? Howdy. That's like aloha. Show it. This place will be like Emptiesville with the student prince out front. Yeah, what if he starts loose with the Indian love call or something? I dig that Clyde is Mr. Cube. All he needs are new threads and a little cool. I think he's kind of cute. Squirrel, he's your project. Round off the corners and uh, get him on the beat. Game? Like ready, Freddy. I knew it. He's starting to rumble. Ding it, Wiggy. He's just Clyde clumsy. <laughs> I'm awfully sorry. Clyde, squirrel. Squirrel, Clyde. Howdy, Clyde. Howdy, ma'am. But my name's Jethro. Sit down, Clyde. <laughs> You're going to cool school. <laughs> Clyde. That last bump, I thought Horace was going to come up with something. <laughs> I will be a minute. I just want to go and show Uncle Jed and Granny my new clothes. Threads, Clyde. Threads. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. Boy, will they be surprised when they see me. Like they'll flip when they dig you. Yes, ma'am. If you all want, you can come in the house. Make the scene in the pad. Yes, ma'am. I'll get it right. <laughs> Oh, boy. Is that cat out to lunch? How can you go ape over him? He is the square root cube. You just leave Clyde to me. Hey, Shell. Huh? Here comes that chick. Howdy! Aloha! Aloha. <laughs> Hi, Ellie Mae. Meet Squirrel. You've dug Shaky, Wiggy, and Horace. Hey, that's a cute little fella. That's a baby goat. <laughs> I still say they look like dogs. <laughs> look at me. I am what she called cool. Well, no wonder. Where's your clothes? Well, these is my clothes. I, I mean, my new strings. String? Or is that threads? <laughs> yeah, that's it. Anyway, there's a gas. What happened to your uniform? Oh, I split that gig. You ain't making no sense. That's cause you don't dig the pad. But I'm a square cause I'm going to cool school. Cool school? Yeah. 
And my teacher's a real pretty ape. And she has gone chick over me. <laughs> where are we going? I'm putting you to bed. <laughs> Miss Jeff says I can go to cool school, learn to dance, and be a jerk like Jethro. <laughs> oh, no, no, chick. You dance the jerk. Jethro is... You might have something there. <laughs> I'm going to tell her she can't do everything I do, Big Daddy. He ain't your Big Daddy. He's my Big Daddy. He's my Big Daddy, too. Hey, neither. This, too. Cool it, cool it. He is the Big Daddy of us all. <laughs> what are you doing, Granny? What's the scene, chick? I'm putting the three of them to bed. Uh, cool it. I mean, uh, hold it, Granny. Maybe it'd be a good notion to let Ellie go to that cool school. Then she could tell us what these other two is talking about. <laughs> oh, you are tuned in, Big Daddy. We will have this chick and this Clyde so far out, you'll have to track them by radar. I still say put the three of them to bed. Oh, let us go, Paul. I mean, Big Daddy. It won't hurt the youngins, Granny. Let's let him go. Well, as long as it's some kind of a school. Oh, you are the king and queen of hearts. Why don't you fall by later and order the class? Uh, we'll do that. Not me. I'm too old for that nonsense. Oh, contraire, Granny Chick. Why, as the great Horace once said, there's no cool like an old cool. <laughs> Ellen Chick, you're digging great. You will graduate with honors. You know something, Squirrel? I'm going kind of chick over you, too. Oh, Squad, I'm going to have to keep you after school. Square. <laughs> I'll teach that bunch of weirdos not to fool with me. In exactly uh, four and one half minutes, all power to that basement will be turned off, and the Parthenon West will be as dark as the Parthenon East. <laughs> What a nice man. <laughs> no lights, no jukebox, no espresso machine, no nothing. Chief, that is hardly fair. They paid their rent even though you doubled it. Yes, I wonder where they got the money. Well, I understand they found a sponsor, someone they call Big Daddy. Oh. Well, Big Daddy's show is just about to be canceled. <laughs> <laughs> Why'd you do that? From what we've seen of the place, it's right nice. Well, we didn't do it. Somebody's killed the juice to our hot wires. There goes the Parthenon West. Yeah, nobody wants to see these ruins by moonlight. You mean you're closing up? What else? Without music and lights, we're like Finishville. Well, uh, maybe Granny and me could help you. How can they be open? I don't know, but it certainly sounds like they are. Come on, we'll see about this. It's Snow White and Grumpy. <laughs> and you're just in time. Big Daddy and his crazy combo are ready to play the next set. You have music? And lights, all through the courtesy of Big Daddy. Eyeball that bandstand. <laughs> you all said? That's Big Daddy. In the cool, cool flesh. <laughs> Well, don't stand there, Miss Hathaway. Let's Charleston. You know, Charleston these days, you jerk. I certainly am. So let's Charleston. Oh. <laughs> Morris just said something. Ain't that a guess? We've been waiting three weeks and we missed it. <laughs>
now it's time to say goodbye to Jed and all his kin. They would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. You're all invited back next week to this locality to have a heapin' helpin' of their hospitality. Hillbilly, that is. Set a spell. Take your shoes off. Y'all come back now, here. This has been a Filmways presentation.